Day number three of the 12 days of MLB rankings coming in hot and coming in right now. We've got the best second baseman from every single team in Major League Baseball ranking all 30 of them. This list is interesting. Second base is pretty fluid. You have the really, really good players and then it's just kind of everybody else. So these rankings, they're going to get a little interesting. As always, if you guys do enjoy these, it really does help out the channel by dropping a like on this. Subscribe if you have not yet done so. What are you doing? 12 days of MLB rankings. You got nine more days left, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. Get in the comment section down below. Let me know what you agree with or most likely disagree with because I know you guys disagree a lot. And follow me on all my social media at Giraffe Neck Mark. Link is in the description. Let's get it started off with those second base rankings. Getting the rankings started today at the number 30 spot, Pittsburgh Pirates second baseman Cole Tucker. Cole Tucker's really never played even half of a full season thus far in Major League Baseball, but in three seasons, he's played about 136 games and the production has really been less than impressive. 217 average, 272 on base, 330 slugging, 602 OPS. Not really fair, but Cole Tucker really has hasn't shown much to get higher on these rankings. Still a young player, only 25 years old, but right now, based on what I've seen, I gotta put him at number 30. Big drop down all the way to number 29, Detroit Tigers second baseman, Willie Castro. Willie Castro is one of the most disappointing players in 2021. After a strong 36 game rookie season, Willie Castro really stunk in 2021. Also proves why sample sizes are really important. After a 932 OPS in 2020, he finished with a 220 average, 273 on base, 351 slugging, and 624 OPS in 2021. Nine homers, 15 doubles, six triples, 38 RBIs, struggled defensively. Overall, it was a bad year for Willie Castro, similar to Cole Tucker, only 25 years old, looking to bounce back in 2022. Got another young second baseman coming in here at the number 28 spot, Cleveland Guardians second baseman, Andres Jimenez. Jimenez always has a great glove, and he had a pretty decent rookie season with the Mets in 2020, but in 2021, he had a little bit of inconsistent playing time, plus his production wasn't great, and he didn't really get a whole lot of time at second base. 68 games, 5 homers, 10 doubles, 16 RBIs, stealing 11 bases, 218 average, 282 glove, 351 slugging, 633 OPS. Right now, Jimenez is only 23 years old, so there is still hope for him, but the offense right now is struggling too much, and the defense wasn't as strong as expected, so Jimenez falls to 28. Okay, Angels fans, close your eyes. If you don't see it, it didn't happen. Coming in at number 27, David Fletcher. I'm sorry, Fletch God, but the fact that you barrel up like one baseball season, it's really tough to put you much higher. Yes, his glove is nice at second base. It's a very, very good fielder, but the offense is just so weak, and it doesn't look like it's really going to be taking a step forward. Last year in 157 games, two homers, 27 doubles, three triples, 47 RBI, stealing 15 bases, hitting 262 with a 297 on base, 324 slugging, 622 OPS. Fletcher's value is with the glove, and maybe I'm being a little bit harsh here, but I'm just not confident that there's really going to be any more production than what we've seen out of Fletcher already, so I'm having him at 27. Next up at the number 26 spot, newly acquired Baltimore Oriole, Rugnet Odor. I can't even believe I'm putting this guy this high, but I don't know. I could see it. The fact that Rugnet Odor at least hits for some power and will be playing in Baltimore where the ball flies out, and he did improve defensively last year, at least shows me something, and somehow Rugnet Odor is only 28 years old. He's only two years away from a 30-30 season, so 15 homers, 12 doubles, 39 RBIs last year with the Yankees, a 665 OPS. It's by no means good, but I just think that his ceiling might be a little bit higher than the guys that I mentioned, which is why I have Odor at 26. Again, the top 25 started Chicago White Sox second baseman Leori Garcia. Now, Leori may not be the most exciting player, but I know you White Sox fans love him, and he's okay. He's fine in the field, and he's okay at the plate. Last year, finished with a WRC plus of 98, just below average. He was a two war player in 126 games, 22 doubles, five homers, four triples, 54 RBIs, hitting 267 with a 335 on base, 376 slugging, 711 OPS. I think the White Sox, if they want to really improve their team, second base is a big hole, but Leary Garcia is very serviceable right now for them. Number 25. For the 24th best second baseman in Major League Baseball, San Francisco Giants, Tommy Lestella. Feels weird because he's going to be a platoon, but right now he's their guy, and Lestella's all right. Defensively, not one of the best, but offensively has a little bit higher ceiling than some of the guys previously mentioned. Last year in 76 games, 7 homers, 11 doubles, a triple, and 27 RBIs. Hitting 250 with a 308 on base, 405 slugging, 713 OPS. Good for a WRC plus of 94, but the projections all have him bouncing back more, getting on base more, hitting for more power, and I expect that as well for Tommy Lestel, which is why I have him here at 24. Next up at number 23, I got Jazz Chisholm of the Miami Marlins. Ugh, I want to put Jazz Rado much higher, but he really did fall off in the second half. That being said, still one of my favorite players in the league despite being on the Marlins. In his 23-year-old season, Jazz played 124 Four games, 18 homers, 20 doubles, 4 triples, 53 RBIs, stealing 23 bags, hitting 248 with a 303 on base, 425 slugging, 728 OPS. There are some things for this guy to improve on on his game, but he has a nice glove. It's going to get better. He's got some pop in that bat. And when you see a guy take Jacob DeGrom deep on 100 up in the zone, I mean, that's special right there. So in his 24-year-old season, I expect him to get better. But right now, the strikeouts need to improve. Jazz is just not at that top level second baseman yet, but it's coming. A bit of a surprise here, coming in at number 22, Tony Kemp of the Oakland A. 
ways. Tony Kemp had a really good season last year for Oakland, albeit in a platoon role against righties. That's pretty much where he does all his damage, but he was really good. 131 games, 400 plate appearances, eight homers, 16 doubles, three triples, and 37 RBIs, stealing eight bases, hitting 279 with a 382 on base, 418 slugging, 800 OPS. The reason he's low is because he truly is a platoon. You play him every single day, facing some of the top competition left-handed pitching, he's going to struggle. But in the role that he plays, he's extremely effective. A WRC plus of 127 last year. Plays pretty decent defense at second. He's a solid little player, but definitely not one of the better second basemen overall in baseball. Still, immense value here at number 22. Just missing out on the top 20, at number 21, I've got Kevin Biggio of the Toronto Blue Jays. Big down season after 19 and 20. He didn't do a lot right this year. Granted, only 79 games, battling some injuries, so I expect to bounce back. But based on what we saw last year, the hype's a little less high on Kevin Biggio. Seven homers, 10 doubles, and a triple with 27 RBIs, hitting 224 to 322 on base, 356 slugging, 678 OPS. The power and the on base was down a lot, and that's concerning. But Biggio's still young, still talented. Hope to see him improve going into 2022. Time for the top 20. At number 20, Brendan Rodgers of the Colorado Rockies. Yes, the former number three overall pick finally getting some love here. Gonna be the everyday second baseman in Colorado, maybe even shortstop at some point. Who knows? Looked pretty good in 2021. Of course, numbers a little inflated in Coors, but we saw him hit 15 homers and 21 doubles with 51 RBIs last year. Hitting 284 with a 328 on base, 470 slugging, 798 OPS. That gave Brendan Rodgers a WRC plus right around league average at 100. And while defensively at second base, he struggled a little bit. I do think as he plays it more, he'll get a little more comfortable. I think he's a top 20 second baseman in the league. Remember, he was a top three pick. This dude's got talent. For number 19 in today's video, I'm going with Nick Madrigal. Nick Madrigal's tough to rank. He's basically David Fletcher, but like better. Better contact, better on base. Maybe not as good fielding, but overall, I do think Madrigal's a better player and very comparable. He's just got elite bat to ball skills. Now, he's not going to barrel up baseballs at an elite rate, but doesn't swing and miss. He makes pretty good contact. And so far in 83 games in his career, not going to hit for power. He's got two homers and 13 doubles with four triples, but he's hitting 317 with a 358 on base, 406 slugging, 764 OPS. That's good for a career WRC plus of 113. It's pretty good. And the glove is super solid as well. So we still need to see Madrigal play a little bit more, but the former number four overall picks definitely got talent. Coming in at the number 18 spot, Minnesota Twins second baseman, Luis Arise. Now I know Jorge Polanco is probably going to be their second baseman, but right now on paper, he slots in at short. They just don't have a guy there. So we go with Luis Arise at second base, where he's pretty good. He's an offensive first second baseman by all means. The glove is not strong, but the bat pretty solid. Last year, he finished with a 294 average, 357 on base, 376 slugging, and 933 OPS. Good for a WRC plus at 103. For his career, WRC plus of 113, average at 313, OPS at 777. He does some things really well with the bat, and he is only 25 years old. I like Luis Arise a lot with the Twins. At the worst, great utility player. For his 17th best second baseman in Major League Baseball, newly acquired Seattle Mariner, Adam Frazier. I'm just not high on this guy like everybody else. I wasn't high on him last year, and I'm going to stay a little bit down more than others. While he does hit for a high average, last year was really the only first year that you saw it reach 300 levels. Otherwise, he's like a 270 hitter who has like little to no pop in his bat, barely barrels up the baseball, plays decent defense. I just don't think he's one of the best second basemen in the league, but he still is like average, very good. He's going to help your team like if you're the Mariners. He doesn't strike out, doesn't really chase. He's a solid player. And last year was a pretty decent year. 305 average, 368 on base, 411 slugging, 779 OPS. We'll see how he does in Seattle. Hopefully it's not like San Diego and more like Pittsburgh. Following up Adam Frazier at number 16, I got Cesar Hernandez of the Washington Nationals. Cesar Hernandez had quite the season last year. While his WRC plus was below 100, he had 21 home runs, which was by far a career high for him. He was doing certain things really well, despite the numbers maybe not looking so great. He finished with a 232 average, 308 on base, 386 slugging, and 694 OPS. Really struggled in Chicago, but that first half with Cleveland, I mean, 18 homers and 17 doubles in 96 games. Cesar Hernandez was looking pretty good, along with good defense. He's basically the most average second baseman I could ever think of, which is why we have him coming in basically at the average spot, number 16. About right. Right at the halfway point here, number 15, Tommy Edmond of the St. Louis Cardinals. So hard to rank. Great with the glove, steals a lot of bags, is a doubles machine, but like, he's a little bit of an accumulator. I don't know. He's fine. He's good. He's very valuable to the Cardinals. It's like another Colton Wong over there, but the bat definitely isn't that strong. I mean, WRC plus of 91 last year. That is below average. With the glove and everything though, still a very solid player here at number 15. Cardinals have a nice second baseman in Tommy Edmond. Also, he should just like stop switch hitting. Just don't do it anymore, ever. For the 14th best second baseman in Major League Baseball, New York Yankees, the Bronx Bombers, we're going with Glaber Torres. Glaber's not a shortstop. Glad the Yankees are gonna be playing him at second base. That being said, he still had some really concerning things go on in 2021, which was just that the offense completely dropped off a cliff. 127 games, only nine home runs and 22 doubles with 51 RBIs. He did steal 14 bases, weirdly enough, but a 259 average, 331 on base, 366 slugging, and 697 OPS. That's concerning. I gave him a WRC plus last year of 94. If he's going to be below 
average defensively. He's got to be able to hit. I still think he will be better, especially moving to second base, which is why I have him at a spot like 14. I think Glaber will be good again. I just got to see it a little bit more. Last two seasons, looking a little shaky for Glaber, but we know that the talent with him is through the roof. One spot ahead of Glaber Torres, another New York second baseman coming in at number 13, Jeff McNeil. McNeil, similarly, bad season last year. No way around it, didn't play well. 93 WRC plus, but with McNeil, he was so elite with the bat in the past. Still has a WRC plus for his career of 126, despite struggle bust last year in 2021. So for that reason, I'm still going to put him somewhat high. I don't think he's ever going to hit 23 home runs like we saw in 2019, but I also don't expect him to hit 250 like in 2021. While there are some adjustments that need to be made to his game, he's still one of the better contact hitters in all of Major League Baseball. We've seen him be patient at the plate before. Plays a decent second base. I mean, his true value is that he can play a bunch of different positions, but I do think that McNeil did have a rough season, battled some injury. Number 13, I think is a completely fair spot for a guy who in the past had WRC pluses hanging around the 135 range. Coming in at number 12, I'm going with Kansas City Royals second baseman Whit Merrifield. As a former Gamecock myself, we love Whit Merrifield. And as a player, he's pretty solid as well. Now, 2021 definitely wasn't his best season. Did take a little bit of a step back offensively. And he is a bit of an accumulator. 42 doubles, 40 stolen bases, 10 homers, 3 triples, 74 RBIs. In 277 with a 317 on base, 395 slugging, 711 OPS. By no means was a very strong year, but we've seen Whit in the past be really good. Gets a ton of hits, doubles machines, steals bases, plays good defense, play a variety of positions at well. I think 12 is a really fair spot for Whit Merrifield going into his 33-year-old season. Just missing on the top 10, coming in at number 11, I got Gene Segura of the Philadelphia Phillies. Gene Segura in the past to me has been like the most average second baseman in the league, but he showed improvements last year. A little more pop in that bat, playing really well, hit 290 with a 348 on base, 436 slugging, 784 OPS. That was good for a WRC plus of 109. Always plays solid defense at second base. Not elite, but solid. 14 homers, 27 doubles, three triples last year. Doesn't really strike out, puts the bat to ball a lot. Gene Segura, you know, he's, he's a pretty solid second baseman. I like him just outside the top 10, even if he is playing in Philly. Gross. Let's get the top 10 started here at the number 10 spot. Boston Red Sox second baseman, Kike Hernandez. How can you not love Kike? I mean, he can play center field, second base, shortstop, third base. He plays them all. But looks like he's going to be the second baseman for Boston in 2022. And his first year in Boston was really good. 20 homers, 35 doubles, three triples, 60 RBIs, hitting 250 with a 337 on base, 449 slugging, 786 OPS. Plays good defense everywhere. Had WRC plus last year of 110. He was about a four win player. Kike is really solid. Start throwing some respect on Kike's name. He's a utility player. Probably going to be playing second base. That 10% walk rate and under 20% K rate. It's a pretty sick combo for Kike Hernandez. At number nine, Milwaukee Brewers second baseman, Colton Wong. Where the Wong stands at. I'm finally showing him the love you guys have been asking for. Colton Wong, of course, one of the best gloves at second base, elite out there. And he's starting to swing the bat more, especially out in Milwaukee. He had a WRC plus of 109, the second time in his career since 2019. Hit 14 homers, 32 doubles, two triples and 50 RBIs in just under 500 plate appearances. 272 average, 335 on base, 447 slugging, 783 OPS. Along with that great glove, Colton Wong, definitely a top 10 second baseman. At number eight, the jack of all trades, Chris Taylor of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Chris Taylor had a fantastic year in 2021 after a strong 2020 season where he had a WRC plus of 130. Last year in 148 games, 20 homers, 25 doubles, four triples, 73 RBIs, even stole 13 bases, hitting 254 to 344 on base, 438 slugging, 782 OPS. Can play all positions, plays them all pretty well. Looks like he's going to be somewhat the everyday second baseman for Los Angeles in 2022. That plus bat, plus the ability to play everywhere, plus he's just a damn good player. I like Chris Taylor here at number eight. For the seventh best second baseman in Major League Baseball, National League Rookie of the Year, Jonathan India. India impressed the hell out of me last year. His discipline at the plate, the pop in his bat, the glove in the field, everything he does, I'm a huge Jonathan India fan. Last year in his rookie season, 21 homers, 34 doubles, two triples, 69 RBIs, stealing 12 bases, hitting 269, nice, with a 376 on base, 459 slugging, 835 OPS, great defense, rookie of the year, all signs pointing upwards for Jonathan India, got him at number seven. And then just missing out on the top five, coming in at number six, I got Ozzy Albies of the Atlanta Braves. This is where second base gets really tough because Albies is probably part of that elite tier and he is really good. Last year, we saw Ozzy Albies power really break out, 30 homers, 40 doubles, seven triples, 106 RBIs with 20 stolen bases. Dude's a stud, 259 average, 310 on base, 488 slugging, 800 OPS for all intents and purposes, which gave him a WRC plus of 107. It's a four win player, plays good defense, all around really, really good Ozzy Albies. And if he stopped switch hitting, these numbers would probably get even better. Can't believe the Braves signed him to a seven year deal for $35 million. He's a stud, he's a beast, just outside the top five though. Getting the top five started at the number five spot, San Diego Padres second baseman, Jake Cronenworth. Jake Cronenworth is so good. He's a beast, great in the field, great at the plate, great base runner. Any way you look at it, Jake Cronenworth is a beast. Last year, 21 homers, 33 doubles, seven triples, 71 RBIs, hitting 266 with a 340 on base, 460 slugging, 800 OPS. Good for a WRC plus of 116, 
15% above league average from second base, plays a variety of different positions. This dude could even pitch if you want to. I know that's crazy. Walk rate just shy of 9%, doesn't strike out at all, puts the ball and play hard. There's no reason not to like Jake Cronenworth. He is 100% a top five second baseman. What a pickup by the Padres a few years ago. Dropping down a little bit despite having a strong season, coming in at number four on my second base rankings, Jose Altuve. We still love Jose Altuve out here. He was great. After a weak 2020, he went off in 2021. 31 homers, 32 doubles, 83 RBIs, hitting 278 with a 350 on base, 489 slugging, 839 OPS. Good for a WRC plus of 130. He's one of the best offensive second baseman in the league. Now the glove, while it's not that strong, it is definitely still a solid glove at second base. It pains me to put him at four. Altuve is really good. You could put him anywhere, I think, in this top five. But right now, I think four is going to be the spot for him. Really glad to see him bounce back in 2021. For the third best second baseman in Major League Baseball, Tampa Bay Rays, Brandon Lau. If you don't know about Brandon Lau, well, you better know now. This dude's a beast. Did you know he almost hit 40 home runs last year? I got a good feeling you might not have known that. 39 homers, 31 doubles, 99 RBIs, hitting 247 with a 340 on base, 523 slugging, 863 OPS. That's good for a WRC plus of 137 among the top in the league. He walks 11% of the time, crushes baseballs, absolute beast at the plate, good base runner even. While the glove isn't that strong, he's a five win player. Yeah, Brandon Lau's a top three second base. So good. Just missing out the number one spot. Coming in at number two, I got Cattell Marte of the Arizona Diamondbacks. If Cattell played more, I think he's probably the undisputed number one second baseman in Major League Baseball. But he did have a little bit of problem staying on the field the last couple seasons. It's about the only thing that really docks him right now. But boy, if he played outside of Arizona, the press on this guy would be unreal. 2021, 14 homers, 29 doubles, a triple and 50 RBIs in 90 games, hitting 318 with a 377 on base, 532 slugging, 909 OPS. Good for a WRC plus of 139. 2020, down year. 2019, fourth in the MVP voting where he hit 32 homers, 36 doubles, nine triples, 981 OPS. He has the ability to be one of the best second basemen in the league and one of the best players. Huge Cattell Marte fan. Number two is a great spot for him. And then coming in at number one, we have another newcomer, newly acquired, big paid second baseman of the Texas Rangers, Marcus Simeon. You can't deny it anymore. Marcus Simeon is legit. He's a stud. And while playing in Texas won't really help the offensive numbers, oh, they'll still play. 19 and 21, he finished third in the MVP voting the last two full seasons we've had in Major League Baseball. He's a grinder. He plays all 162 those two seasons. I'm completely ignoring the down 2020. Don't care. Look at what he's been able to do in 19 and 2021. 2021, he was one of the best players in the league. 45 homers, 39 doubles, two triples. What is that? 86 extra base hits, 102 RBIs. He even stole 15 bases. His glove is disgusting in the field now. 265 average, 334 on base, 538 slugging, 873 OPS. Good for a WRC plus of 131. Then you look at 2019, another MVP type season, WRC plus 138. 33 homers, 43 doubles, seven triples, 92 RBIs, 892 OPS. Marcus Simeon's a stud, not just one of the best second basemen in the league, one of the best players. He is the clear, obvious number one choice here for best second baseman in Major League Baseball. There they are, the rankings for the best second baseman from every single team in Major League Baseball. I'd love to know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Did I rank Jazz Chisholm too low? Let me know in the comments down below. Drop a like on the video if you did enjoy it, as well as subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the content coming at you. Follow me at GiraffeNeckMark on all my social media, links in description. That's where I'm wrapping up today's video. You guys know the drill from here on out. YouTube recommends you watch this video. This is my most recent upload. Click through those if you have not yet seen them. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow for the third base rankings. Day number four.